Good morning. Whether you are in business, thinking about getting into business, whether you run a major company, or if it's just you on your own, this is Wake Up to Business TV, your Get the Business Day Started program. This week, we've got two case studies for you. We've got a man who knows all about keeping slim and trim, which happens to be the name of his company. We'll talk to Neville in just a few moments' time. Um, he's achieved an awful lot in the past six months, um, really getting more people involved in fitness, but by offering free sessions. So we'll find out how that works from a business model point of view in just a few moments. We're also talking to an app developer as well, a guy called John, who has absolutely changed the way he runs his business in the past few months. And he says it's working really, really well for him. Plus, we've got some thoughts on how you can get money from your clients now. Plus, we're going to be doing some super mentoring where we mentor each other. Keep watching. All the will be explained about that. And we've got a good chat on business pitfalls and solutions as well. It's a packed show. Let's get on with it. This is Wake Up To Business TV. Keep up to date at wakeuptobusiness.com. Good morning. My name is Richard Midson from shoutpow.com. I have a social media company, and I'm also currently working on another project as well, which I really want to tell you about, but we'll have to wait a bit for that. We are in Kingston-upon-Thames in Surrey, where we've been invited by the organisers once again to Kingston Business Biscotti. If you didn't know, this is a really fantastic event in an area which is packed with entrepreneurs and businesses. And it's not surprising why, really. Kingston is perhaps best known for its retail centre, but the area has also one of the highest average income rates in London. So, providing you can actually afford to live here, there is plenty of opportunity for businesses to thrive, as you can see by the range of people behind us here today. So if you live in this area or if you're in visiting distance, then why not come along to Kingston Business Biscotti? You can find out all the details on the internet. Just to search for Kingston Bis Business Biscotti, if I can actually say it right. Big thanks to everyone also who's been involved in all the test shows so far for this project too. Uh, we're gonna be getting ready for the proper launch as well. And I wanna thank a whole load of people. And I'm sure I'm gonna forget some names here. So Martha Sonnell, Neville, who's this chap here? Sue, John, who we're gonna be talking to later. Richard, Steve, Jay, Ruth Ann, Mr. McDonut, yes. Craig, John, and Lloyd. And also special thanks to several other Johns, Radka, Sally, Charlie, and Sue. There've been so many people involved in helping get this project underway. So thank you very much to them. We plan, once we've got all the technical problems sorted out, to get doing this properly and get all the social media underway as well attached to this. As usual, the events organisers have provided us with two fantastic guests. We're going to talk to one of them first, which is Neville. So let's get your week started with a case study and meet my first guest, who's been sitting very patiently. Thank you very much, Neville, for doing that. Um, Neville, you are, uh, well, a fitness guru, I think, is probably oh, the, the best way of describing <laughs> you. Um, Neville, t just tell us what your company is first. Okay, my company is it's called Think Slim and Trim, but the company itself is a health and fitness industry. Right. Uh, it's based on the principles of a large company called Herbalife International, and what we do is we basically make people aware and educate them on the correct forms of exercise and the correct way to eat to gain the most energy and get to their health goals. I have to say, I, I saw one of your sort of presentations one time whereby you got out all these boxes with the calorie numbers on them and you threw them out and you said which which would you like to eat and obviously i went straight for the chocolate biscuits and then you proceeded to tell us you know what was in that and it, oh my god but but you know obviously you're a slim and trim man. how did you get into this area and why i got into it because originally i was a, a pretty much stressed out and under energized police officer ah, with right, very young right. kids right yeah I had an avid interest in health and fitness and I thought I was doing well but looking back on it, sleeping on the train on the way home, yeah. kind of a common thing, uh, shouting at home, stress levels high, it's what I see now in everyday life yeah. and it's from that a chance online internet advert I answered, met up with some people who are all happy, all positive all the time. Yeah. I thought, wow, and I've that got to just sold that. it to you. Yeah, I've got to get but, into that. But, you know, you're working as a police officer. You've got a, a reliable income, a steady job. There's always going to be crime. There's always going to be police officers. Why did you make that leap? What gave you the confidence? The confidence was what was presented to us in the facts and figures. So right. uh, there was no opinions based. It was literally facts and figures that the wellness industry is a such a huge market. Mm. Uh, it's surviving through all the recessions and increasing through all the recessions. Yeah. And I've always wanted to do something for myself, but was too scared to 
do things that I didn't know about without any help, spend lots of money trying different things that either weren't my passion or I didn't quite understand how to. But, yeah, I, mean, I mean, this sounds like the, the, the you're using a franchise model or is it something... Yeah. It's definitely and, and a franchise yeah, you, model. You know, when I talk to you, you don't seem like the kind of person who's just doing what someone else says. No, no, it's not what someone else says. It's the advice given, but it's a franchise model in the respect of you don't need to think up the ideas. Mm. You don't need to worry about product development or the marketing. How do you do things? Basically, it's the how. Mm. You don't need to worry about the how. And as yeah. we say in the industry, as long as there's a big enough motivation why, mm. they'll show you the how. Yeah. And so it's a duplication model. You just follow what's been successful, tweak it for your own personality and situation, and don't quit. But, 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 but taking that leap, you know, again, as I say, a police officer's a steady job. Yeah, it was. You know, okay, everyone complains about how much they're paid, but it's not too bad a salary. You can, you can definitely live on it. How did you get that confidence to make that leap? Was it really just the facts and figures were sold to you? And, and obviously, um, when well, I you're started... you fed up with the job as well. I was a little bit fed up with it. Yeah. Yes, I was. If I hadn't come across this, not enough to leave. However, the beauty of the business is that you can do it around a job mm. and see how it feels and how it fits in. And right. How it's, what you feel so you were able to lower yourself into... Or yes. raise yourself raise into, in. into yes. the business Before world and I try it out. Yeah. yeah. Now, in all business development, there's always going to be hurdles. What would you say was the biggest hurdle you had to overcome? What goes on between your ears. Yeah, the interesting attitude. point. Yes. All the things yeah. that are not mainly not shown to you through the traditional uh, business teaching yeah yeah all the practical aspects can be shown yeah but if you don't have strength of character great attitude being able to deal with challenges then it doesn't matter what you're shown yeah it's gonna go and it was really that which is termed personal development yes that's what helped me grow and grow and that's part and parcel of what's given to us. So if you if you have one bit of advice, let, let's say for people that haven't got into business yet, who are trying to do it, they're, they're sort of having a go at it, and they're thinking, I, I don't think this is gonna work, or this is going around their head, what would you say? I would say, forget asking people how to. Ask them, what do you read and what do you listen to that's helped you change your mindset? Hmm. That's way, way more powerful. Um, you know, so you, what is it that persuaded you in the first place? Well, is that what you're the saying? people I met yeah. Yeah, that were completely get ordinary. Get back in touch with that. Yeah, it was so ordinary people I saw mm. earning more than me, happier more, better than me, more fit than me. Not walking the streets all day long. No, freedom of time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yet there was nothing special. I thought, they can do it, I can do it. Yeah. Right, so... So we found out how you got into business. Just tell us a bit about what you actually do now. How, what is your product then? Because you, you're also telling me that you've been doing free fitness sessions. Now yes. how does that work in a business model? Giving stuff away free doesn't oh. pay your bills. I know, it's, it's completely turning a business model on the head. Um, most people in fitness will look to increase their, their fees for the exercise activities they're doing. Gym memberships, uh, boot camps, etc. All to, we discovered this model through a, a Herbalife member who ran boot camps. But when she turned it into a free activity, the number of people that came on board doubled overnight. And then it is the attitude again and the skill of the person or people to be able to educate those that come on board on what is needed over and above an exercise. Mm. So yes, people come in for the free fit camp and we give them all the great exercise they need. But how do you then monetize that? Because presumably then there's extra products on top of that that they can use, is that it? Absolutely. The bottom line is we earn our income through the products that are sold to customers, but we only ever sell, and this is again something that all businesses should believe in is you only sell what the customer needs and wants yes yeah not what you think they should yeah it's one of the biggest lessons it. I've learned yeah. yeah so through the process of understanding the customers it's a very personal thing yeah we know what they want and we can show them the solutions and then they are free to decide right if people live in Kingston Montems or in the surrounding area how do they get in touch with you and uh, what can they come along and try then? Okay, they can go straight to the website which is www.free24fit.camp 
we'll put it on the screen as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and from there, you'll see my contact number, all the activities we run. We have a wellness centre in the middle of Kingston, and people can just pop up and have a look. And I can tell you, this this man knows his stuff. He has told me quite a few things. So thank you very much for joining us thank for the you. moment, Neville. This is Wake Up to Business TV. Keep up to date at wakeuptobusiness.com. This is Wake Up to Business TV. You'll get the Business Day Started program. I'm Richard Midson from shoutpower.com. We're at Kingston Business Biscotti, a Las Iguanas Latin food restaurant in Kingston. Kingston upon Thames in Surrey today and uh, of course if you want to find out all the details about Kingston Business Biscotti just go on the internet and have a look for Business Biscotti Kingston and all the details will of course come up straight away it is the fir first Friday of every month isn't it John that's correct yeah, yeah. wonderful right let's have uh, more of an in-depth chat now we're going to be talking to um, John Ballard now now John you are from Lime Time Apps just tell us very briefly what is your company first of all Oh, we Lion Time Apps is uh, a, a small company. We we just we build apps for uh, tablets and uh, smartphones. So basically, Apple and Android devices. And so this is or, or what you have been doing because I'm really interested to ask you about the way you've changed your business recently. But you've been building them for businesses. Been building for businesses. Uh, so it, really, any any small business that, that need needs apps that, um, that the, the sort of promotional devices for their companies. Right. So what sort of thing? What sort of things do you do? So if you get a company coming up to you and saying, you know, I'm a I'm a restaurant, hmm. I need an app. Yeah. So re restaurants is ideal for that sort of thing because they they probably want to have uh, a, a, a a presence, if you like, in the mobile world, hmm. so that they can uh, ha have have their customers looking onto the using the app to, to see what the menus are, perhaps make a booking. Um, ask questions, you know, for booking rooms or booking tables. So it's, it's a way of holding a communication then? That's right. right. And as a business, the business can offer special offers. For instance, you know, use the app and you get a free glass of wine with your meal, that kind of thing. So that's a way of getting people to download it? That's right. Now, look, look, you've just told me that you've completely pivoted your business. Now, pivoted, if you don't know this term, yeah, yeah. means that you've fundamentally changed how you do your business. Mm. Now, it's still to do with apps, but just tell us what you did and why you decided to make that change. Um, what, what I've done is I've actually t I've turned, turned the business around completely. So now, instead of making apps specifically for businesses, we're now making apps for ourselves. Uh, and so the, the, the we we're actually now looking into the games market. Right. So we've actually just launched uh, a, a new game, right? Um, which is just on iOS for Apple at the moment. And the what's it called? Go on. It's, it's Give called, it a plug. Go it's, on. It's called Ape Vine. Ape Vine. Okay, Ape Vine, so you can have yeah. a look for that. So it's just it's just a fun little app. It's and that's for iPhone, Android, it's or just out, it's just iPhone. Alone. Okay. iPhone and tap and right. uh, iPad. Um, uh, but to ask you to answer your question yeah. is, is to sort of why that happened. Um, I, um, I actually went, went to a business show back in May and there was a lady there who was talking about apps and, and she's in the app business and I was, it was looking, she, she basically gave a, a talk on a seminar and was talking about how the business was working for her and some of the things that she was doing to generate the business mm. and I, it got me thinking because I thought well I know those things but I'm not doing it in the yeah. same way you are, what are you doing that's different? And so. What she's the, the point she, that was that was really different was that she was only making the apps for herself rather than for others, and by doing that, you then have complete control over time scales, what the content is, and everything. Yeah. Else. And the biggest problem that, that we've had in making um, apps for businesses is to get the content from the, the customer. So, yeah. in other words, the and business. this time now you're controlling that. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. But but how do you make money from that if you're making a game? For you, so is this one that you've designed the game? You've gone, yeah. okay, this could be fun. Yep. Yeah, yeah, right. absolutely. So, so, so the uh, obviously there's a lot of time and effort goes into the coding of it. Yeah. But there's a, there's probably even more effort and, and time is going into the marketing of it. Um, but the 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 uh, the game makes money by having ads coming up, and they yeah. and they're called interstitial ads. Yeah, I think we've all seen them even on yeah. uh, non-gaming so, apps, haven't we? Right. Yeah. So they just so literally, yeah. you get to the end of the process, yeah. you, you fall over or whatever, and it up pops an ad. 
Right. Okay. So if you click on it, we get a very small percentage, of, uh, just a literally a point zero um, one of a penny or something, but they all add up. So you get we get get a few pence from that coming through, um, but also there's some in-app purchases available. So people are fed up seeing the ads. They can pay, uh, you know, 99p or whatever it might be yeah. to not have the ads. So how did you get into apps? What were, what were you doing before apps? Oh, I was I was I, I was uh, in, in looking at um, websites and internet businesses. So right. it been in that for. Uh, what 12 years now right. so and, and that's a business that's, that's still going yeah. um, but that was kind of is it really led on from there because the the skill sets and the technologies involved aren't that different yeah and it was talking to a customer one day who is talking about having a mobile website and it, we then got it talking about apps so actually maybe maybe what they needed yeah. was an app because we hear about this several I mean a friend of mine has got uh, I mean he's got a relaxation app which has been in the top 15 in America for the past couple of years. Yeah. And so it's amazing how if you come up with something reasonably high quality, because there's an awful lot of dross out there as well, then it can really make an impact. So what about in terms of designing these games? So are you, where are you getting your research for that from? Because there's an awful lot of games out there, aren't there? How can you compete there, in that there, market? There are, and um, the, the, the only the, a good example I can give you is um, there's, a, there's an app out there now uh, which is called I can't forget the name for a minute, but basically it's um, it's a gem gemstone type game where you have you lots of these things drop down. One of the very simple but highly addictive Sim games. Simple, highly yeah. addictive. Okay, and there's one particular company that's that's basically done exactly the same as they. There's many, many out there a bit already. Yeah. But they just did it in a slightly different way. Yeah. And it got it caught on. Yeah. And they're now worth millions. Yeah. In fact, if not billions. Yeah. But it's and it's just a matter of you can pick up on ideas that people are already doing and just make it better. Right. Right. And that's that's good advice actually in business generally. Yeah, actually, yeah. I'm mean, taking that slightly away from there. Is yep. often the original ideas and I've tried this in the past can completely fail. It's when you do something better, which often you have more success. That's right. Yeah. Uh, John, you are one of the uh, one of the organisers of this event, so I yes. want to ask you a bit about Kingston Business Biscotti as well. Mm -hmm. um, just tell us how long has it been going, and where do people find details, and tell us a bit about it. Well, Business Biscotti, uh, um, as a as an organisation, I think, um, and don't quote me on this, I think <laughs> around about three years, that kind of thing. Uh, started started by. Um, a lady called Sue Reeves, yeah. um, f who's uh, Reading based. Yeah, and we've had uh, her on one, one of the That's technical right. test yep. shows on this. Um, yeah. And the, uh, the the Kingston um, business Biscotti, in the current venue we've uh, we've been going for about six months. Before that, we were at uh, another venue for probably another six or eight months. Mm. And um, and we've we've moved around simply because the venues we're in um, had uh, yeah, they had other things going on and right. weren't able to host us anymore. Um, so as, as a group we've been going for a couple of years now as a Kingston yeah. Biscotti. And we, we were saying also in this program as well is that this really is a very affluent area. There's a lot of money, a lot of opportunity mm. for business. If you can afford to actually live in this area, of course, is the other problem as well. So, but you know, you do see the diversity of the people coming in here, don't you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and this venue is great because we're right next to the town centre. Yeah, sadly um, you can't see this, but right yeah. outside behind the camera <laughs> is the town centre. Absolutely. So. We're, we're right there, right on top of the town centre yeah. and that's actually an interesting thing that we've noticed over the last few meetings is that we're getting a lot of people turning up who are completely new we've never seen before and they're coming along because they realise it's right on top of where you know right next to where they're working yeah. whereas the previous ven venue which was only just down the road was another 10 or 15 minutes walk for them yeah. and so they weren't they weren't coming along so right so people can find out details where um, on the Business Biscotti website, so it's businessbiscotti.co.uk. Yep, businessbiscotti.co.uk and the Kingston Group. And the Kingston Group, that's Excellent. right. Excellent. Right, don't forget if you've got a meeting or a business gathering or a show or expo or anything like that that you'd like to have featured on Wake Up To Business TV, then do let us know. Just go to wakeuptobusiness.com and click on contact and send us a message. There's a ton of promotional benefits to having us film at your event as well, so do get in touch with us today. Uh, it's time to have a look at our resource of the week as well for 
this resource of the week. It's more of a general thought, in fact, in, in the past, and this is something actually John can relate to as well. Um, if someone wanted to buy from you and you didn't have the forms or whatever, you risk losing the sale. But today, your smartphone can act as a chip and pin device. Companies like PayPal, Square, all kinds of people offer these add-ons that you can add on to any kind of iPhone or to an Android as well that allow you to actually take credit card payments on the spot. They can cost you about sort of 50 quid to actually buy these things, but once you've got it, you're no longer stuck with having to get back to people or having to get a, chi a pin chip and pin machine plugged into the wall. So now you're able to, even if you're standing on the top of Mount Snowden to take a credit card payment, if you can get a mobile phone signal as well though, isn't it? That's Absolutely. the only problem if you're on top of the mountain. But anyway, it does give you that opportunity. So it's great talking to you, John. Thanks very much for that. Lots more still coming up. Um, it's the kind of advice you can get at these sorts of events as well, as you can see here. Just the people walking in right now behind us, more people gathering at this event. The diversity of the information you can get, we're going to be finding out more of the ideas that we can discuss in just a few moments time this is wake up to business tv keep up to date at wakeuptobusiness.com i'm richard mitson from shoutpower.com we've got two great guests who we've already introduced of course put forward by the organizers of this event and ironically they are two of the organizers of this event i wonder how that happened but anyway <laughs> anyway we're also of course uh, joined again by neville Capadia. Thank you. Thank you once again from Think Slim and Trim and uh, also from John Ballard from Lime Time Apps who we were talking about, talking about the pivoting as well. So let's look at some of the questions you've been asking, whether it's on the website or just topics which just keep coming up on business forums around the internet. Now, until we get fully underway, these are questions that I've spotted around the web. So first question was from Terry who runs a computer repair shop. How did you define the perfect customer for your business so you knew who to go after and what research did you do? So let's put that question first of all to Neville. How did you define the perfect customer for your business and what research did you do? Okay, so the perfect customer for my business, health, see, is someone who is serious about making a change. So the, the type of research or the type of valuation actually that I would do is a question and an answer sit down to discover what is there a real drive behind them wanting to make a change or are they just saying they would like so to there's be a lot of people that want to get fit but uh, you your target market is the people who actually do uh, yes there's a lot of people that say say yes and do no but I want the ones that say yes and want to carry on yeah so how did you plan doing that though have you, you just got people in the door and then said let's do a survey or how did you know what to ask them okay so we developed a philosophy of dangling the carrot to get people in on their own uh, reasons why. So whatever the reason is, normally it's, oh, I'd like to lose weight. So come and discover how, as an example. Once they're through the door, that's when we sit down and really find out, do they actually want to do what they're saying through the question and answers in an evaluation? Or are they hoping for that magic miracle pill, magic bullet that we don't provide? So from the example of Terry's computer company, we're sort of saying, look, when people come in the door, depending on what they want, you need to find out whether they're serious about buying a high-end piece of kit or low-end piece of kit. I mean, this is something you can relate to, John, isn't it, as well? Oh, absolutely. You know, how did you pick the, the right, or how do you pick the right people for your app business, which is totally different from what Neville's doing, obviously. Well, in, 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 as far as business apps are concerned, it, it, the audience really is, uh, is, is small businesses who are keen about promoting what they're doing. Um, so actually, how to pick those those yeah, I was ideal say, customers? How, is, because every business wants to promote itself. So how do you nail absolutely. that down into who that, wants that? Re really, as far you know, from that comes down to thinking about what we're doing as a business. And then thinking about a particular market and then targeting those customers in that market. Mm. So to give you an example, um, a while ago, we were looking at the schools market. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we actually targeted schools mm. for the particular idea we had for an app. Mm. Um, 
But then, uh, you know, at an earlier stage in our business, we weren't being quite so specific, so we were just looking at for anybody. And we just came up with a whole bunch of different people in business doing different things. And that was literally anything from pubs and restaurants, and we even had one lady who was a hypnotherapist, for instance. So a, a, a big range of, of different businesses. Because one of the things that, I mean, I know about the tech world as well, is that there are people who are tech savvy and those who are definitely not. And trying to persuade people who are not tech savvy about the merits of technical stuff can be well just hard work mm. that's, that, that, well that's that's difficult and 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 actually the um pro probably the hardest thing that we we find is that um that actually trying to get people to understand what is required of them yes to produce the, you know the end result yeah is is actually a hard is a hard thing to do yeah. right move on to the next question jane from hounslow um she lets properties buy to let properties and asks the question Oh, this is to do with computers again, actually. Windows, with Windows unveiling their uh, latest Windows system, which type of computers do you use in your business and how do they help your business? John, we've got to come straight to you for that one. What sort of win uh, what, well, do you use Windows? No, Apple? Well, I, what I, do you use I, and why? Well, I, I use Apple primarily simply because um, I. Um, well, well, certainly, from when, when, we, when we started producing. Um, the apps. I, I need an Apple computer p to be able to submit the uh, Apple to produce the apps and to submit them to Apple. Because you're doing so them. For you have iPhones, to have an Apple computer. Saying, yeah. You can't do it without. Yeah. And um, before that, I was you know I was using Windows all the time. But actually now I've gone over to using Apple. I prefer it, and it's 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 one of those funny things. And and a lot of people use Windows and they don't get on with it. Yeah. And others do, and yeah, but I'll happily use. So for Windows you, well. it was actually crucial to your yeah. business model. What about yeah. you, Neville? Does it matter uh, what you I'm, use? I'm an Apple advocate for years and years <laughs> and years. I now, does it make any it. difference to your business, though? For me, because I'm not one of these tech-savvy people. Yeah. To me, Apple is so intuitive. It's simple. They're one of the big things, of course, is there's no bugs. And, and viruses that attack it, yeah. so you don't have to worry about that. But also, it's it, it's it's uh, obvious where things are kept on it. There's none of these odd files that you find on a window computer. I see my, my at home they've got a Windows computer, and forever searching for things on it. Um, to me, it's logical. Yeah. An Apple. Although I have to say, we do have one at the wellness centre purely because the program only runs on Windows. Yes. And that's the only one we have. So, so your advice in that way is keeping it simple. Apple actually works oh, for you for as me, well. me, definitely. You see, I, I'm very much a Windows man just because I love the fiddly bits. Because I'm a bit of a tech head. A bit, <laughs> a bit like you, actually, John. <laughs> see, I, I don't want to use the simple stuff. I want to get in there and fiddle around with all the bits. So it's just... It's nothing to do with my business, it's just me. <laughs> anyway, finally, final question, and um, one from, the, uh, from a, sp a forum I spotted as well. Alex asks, um, did you do a business plan? Oh, great question, this one. And how useful actually was it? Neville, let's ask you about this one. Short answer, no. And reason why it's not required in the type of business um, I've joined. Is this because you're using a franchise model? Or what uh, you're talking exactly, about? because it's all done for you. Yeah. So there was no requirement for a business plan because there was no requirement to seek funding, anything in that respect. So it wasn't actually required. You just duplicate what's shown right. to you. Okay. John, what about yourself? Did you do a business plan, and was it useful? I, but initially, I did a business plan. Yeah. So the, this is um, the company I'm, we're, we're, I'm running now, which is which is Lime Time, which is uh, is primarily for apps. That actually came out of my, uh, my, my previous business, which actually is still still running, which is websites. Mm. And now for that, I did I did the uh, the full business plan, and that but that was 12 years ago. And so that was a business plan looking at the projected revenues and what the costs were and all the rest of it. And, and that was really, really useful because I was able to go and discuss that with my accountant and, and sort of decide whether what I was planning on doing was the right thing to do. Yeah. Now, having then, you know, uh, three years ago now, moving on to apps, I, because of the technologies being quite similar and moving, moving that through, I didn't specifically do a, a business plan for that. I looked at what the target market might be and how I could actually use my existing business to sort of help promote that and, mm. and go through there. So you use that, but how useful has it actually been, apart from to explain to the accountant? A business plan? Oh, no, a business plan is crucial actually because, because without it you, you can't actually measure what you're doing and actually whether you know if you've reached the milestones that if your business is going in the right direction. Yeah. 
See, this is the kind of advice you can get. I've said it before on this program, the kind of value you get from coming along to these networking events. John, just tell everyone about the, the event we're at again, Kings and Business with Scotty. Yeah, Kings and Business with Scotty, we meet on the first Friday of every month at uh, Las Iguanas, which is a lovely Latin restaurant that we're at now. And um, it's, uh, it's a free to attend, although we, we do ask for a small donation of three pounds towards a tea or coffee that you might have. Yeah, we should also mention where we are. It's John St. Las Iguanas, which uh, in itself is a success story. It started off as a small restaurant in Bristol in 1991 and now has 38 restaurants around the country. So another business success that we're here today. They're supporting us and we're supporting them as well. This is Wake Up To Business TV. Keep up to date at wakeuptobusiness.com. We're going to do something a little bit different now. Today we are going to do super mentoring, as I've called it, just for better looking for another better word for it but we're going to find out how this all works each person here has skills in a trade or in a business and what we're going to do is go around the table and we're each going to try and help mentor the other guests with some advice that they can use in their business today so what we do is we'll start off with me doing this first of all so uh, my my particular field is, is in the social media space so let, let's start off with Neville so um, I guess my first question would be have you done much social media Ironically, I only got into Facebook last year. Right. And kind of self-taught, bought a little course on it, haven't actually finished a course. Um, it's not my passion. Yeah. But I've realised through the Fit Camp we run, yeah. through Fit Camp, how powerful it is. 80% of all our responses yeah. came from Facebook. One, one of the key things that I always say to people is it's very much about developing a conversation. And you're right, and it can be a lot of hard work doing proper social media. I was at a firm the other day who was saying, well, can't we just automate this stuff? Well, no computer can read the responses of people on Facebook yeah. and, and produce a genuine response. But one of the things that you find is that when you actually start to develop that conversation, and I'm sure you're, you're starting to find this, when you start to develop that conversation, it actually becomes fun. Yes. Because it becomes like us chatting away here, sharing ideas. When you're just putting out messages on Facebook, which are just advert, 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 it's just hard work. You think each day, what am I going to write? No one responds to it, you give up. But when you start really communicating with people, not only do you get that far bigger response, but you also start to enjoy it too. So, so I mean, my, my tip for the day would be, that's it, really get into that conversation and get on a personal level, really enjoy it. Okay. John, have, uh, what about you? Have you you've done much social media? Do you know, uh, uh, not in quite the same way as, as Neville's uh, you know, bought a course and not finished it. Um, <laughs> I've certainly bought a few books yeah. and, and not finished reading the books. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, and it, I, I think it's one of those sort of topics that you either, it's a bit like Marmite, I think. You, I you think either you, love it or I hate think you it. You either love it or hate it. And I'm quite happy you sort of using it, uh, you know, so Facebook and keeping in touch with friends and family, I think. But from a business point of view, I find it kind of, I'm not, I find it's it a bad one, mix. Well, it's actually, one, one point I would say here is, is it even relevant to the people that you want to reach? Well, that's, that's, that's a question. I think there is some relevance. Uh, and, and in fact, we have, have set up a, um, uh, a Facebook page for, uh, for our apps. And, um, and perhaps more it. now now that you're getting into the game area but in the past I suppose the, the business well, no, the business. It, well funny enough in, in the past the, the very first app we did was was uh, was a Formula One based app right um, which again so it wasn't a business app at all actually it was a, a fun gamey type thing um, and um, so we, we set up the, the Facebook page and aimed at people who were interested in Formula One and motorsports right and that was um, there's a real conversation to develop that, there yeah that's right and, and, and actually we, we got I, I think within the first few weeks mm. we actually got about 260 followers yeah you know which is we're amazed you know that was wow let's go on for that but you've got to keep on keeping up some information you've got to keep up the dialogue going on yeah. all the time and that was the hard thing but I suppose with, with your new games, is there a conversation that you can develop out of your game? Is there something that can be talking about scores or techniques or strategies you can use to try and beat your games? Yeah, perhaps on, on top of the game. You see, because because it's not going to be just one game, you know, there's there's um, there's benefits for having a, 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 a Facebook page, for instance, that you know you can talk about your product or your range of products but when you start getting down to the nitty-gritty of an individual game or an mm. app or what it might be then you know that's lost to part of your audience because mm. 
they don't have it. They haven't downloaded that. Yeah. So yeah, there you've got to really think about where which message you're actually going to be talking about, haven't you? That's I mean, right. uh, one point I would get out of that straight away is that sometimes social media is not going to work for a business. If your target market are not interested or engaging with it or interested in what content you're going to talk about, mm. then you're wasting your time anyway. So don't even bother spending the time. Yeah. But with, with that particular thing, you've got to come up with a fairly common message that you've got to run through your theme to keep people engaged with it. But if you've got a really passionate group of people, let's say some some games out there like Angry Birds, developed a real following in terms of things right. you That's can right. yeah, yeah. buy from it and all that. So then you've got to develop that conversation they want to talk about and then really engage with it. Okay, there's my two tips. <laughs> So you might notice a little bit strange there. Everyone suddenly vanished behind us. That's because uh, we needed to stop to do a bit of networking and also to bring the meeting to a close as well. Now, hopefully, uh, the restaurant here, Las Iguanas, are not going to chuck us out because we wanted to carry on doing this super, super mentoring, as we're calling it this time. So I've done my bit. I've given some advice to uh, both John and Neville. Um, John, let's come over to you now. Your turn to mentor us on Sunday, what can you help us? Yeah, well, it, I was um, actually leading on from the uh, the social media sort of area, but, but obviously we still we still have um, a, there's a lot of interest actually, and, and still a very important part of business is uh, is actually the, the, the your website pr presence, you know, your internet yeah. presence, and actually making sure that you're coming up on the listings and the rankings, and there's there's lots of ways to. Um, to actually get you know, to promote your business, I mean, so, so you never. What what are you are you doing anything to um to promote your business online? Um, n n only on the Facebook, the social media side, um, that then links back to the I'm website. Not, okay. Um, because I, I found it a lot easier to do it on Facebook. But that's the only reason. And, and what about on, on for instance, you know, your your Google ranking? Are you doing anything for that? Or do you know where you are? Nothing no, like that at all. That's too techy and. Too complicated. But yeah, I mean, we, I mean, that's and that's actually exa exactly where um, you know a lot of the people who come to these business events actually can help because there's a plenty of people out there who are doing um, search engine optimization, pay per click advertising, all that that kind of thing. Because those those are all things that, that help your business become a presence, you know, on on the internet. And in this day and age, you need to be getting to the top of your. So, so something simple that Neville can do to sort of start looking at it even. Yeah, well, first of all, just is actually actually go 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 to your website and well, not your website. Go go to Google, and put in some some phrases where, where that you would expect your your website to come up for. Okay. So you know if it's going to be fit camp, or whether it's going to be coaching, or whether it's going to be you know herbal life. Those those things, put them up and see if you cut your your website's coming up. And if it's not. Then look down the pages and see where it's coming to. And there's a bunch of tools out there you can use. Google has some webmaster tools that you can use. They're all free. And you can actually get an idea where you're ranking and what, whereabouts your website is coming. Um, then there's a lot of work to be done, you know, which is where if, you're not, if you don't understand it yourself. Yeah. But there are people out there who, who can help you um, to, to actually do, you know, to, to get, get your ranking coming up. Okay. No, from my point of view, I mean, a few years ago before Google went and, and they keep changing everything, don't mm. they? Mm. Um, you know, obviously my focus is very much on the social media side, but in the past I actually had a website which ranked number one for a long time for showreels. Yep. And this was in the day where you just stuffed your front page with loads of keywords like showreels, showreel, showreel, and it worked really well. But that's all changed. What, what, what do I need to do to keep up to date with all these changes? Yeah, that, that, and that's um, that's actually a very key question for so many people. And the the simple answer is, y you can't keep up all the time. So you will find that unless unless you're actually paying someone to, to do that for you and keep it right on top and manage it, which is a full time job almost, then you you know you're going to find you're going to go up and down on the rankings. Um, a lot of people now do um, they 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 actually use pay per click advertising. So that's actually paying Google for the little ads that come up. And if you have a campaign that keeps it going, first of all, it does two things. One, it, one, it actually gets some real people clicking through to your, your website and you, you, you know, you'll get some business from it. It'll cost you. But that also has the uh, knock-on effect that it actually brings your ranking up um, in, within the Google listings as well. So you actually start getting some organic hits as well. Um, but, but longer term, you, you know, if your website's not ranking, you need to look at the content of your website mm. to make sure that you've got all the keywords that people might be searching on mm. and make, make sure your, your content is actually is changing. Because if your content hasn't changed for a few months, then it actually starts dropping off the list. So, you, yeah, I mean, this is one of the reasons why with social media, I keep trying to update stuff mm. all the time to keep the website yeah. fresh. 
yeah. but it does seem to be so much more complex now oh. than it was a few years ago. No, you, you, you know, it's, it's a bit like a, a high street shop yeah. that's selling, uh, you know, some, some clothes, for instance, and if they just sit there and leave the same old clothes in the window week in, week out, they're never going to sell a thing because yeah. they change it. So they change it on a weekly basis. And it's as simple as that on a website. If, if all you're changing is maybe, you know, this week's, you know, favorite picture or whatever it is, just but change a few little things, just tinker with it. And yeah. it makes a difference. Brilliant. See, once again, it's fantastic advice. In fact, actually, um, Sue Reeves, who's the founder of Business Biscotti, was saying uh, on a previous show that it really is, a, when you come to these events, it's about giving some value to other people. And uh, hopefully you are getting this. This is really is just a, a microcosm of what's been going on behind us. I'm pointing behind us and everyone's gone home. This is Wake Up To Business TV. Keep up to date at wakeuptobusiness.com. Just a reminder that we're at Kingston Business Biscotti at Las Iguanas, Latin food restaurant in Kingston-upon-Thames in Surrey today. This is one of the many events going on around the country. Let's have a quick look at some of the other events that uh, you've been telling us about that are coming up. Um, after last time talking about events are all in the Midlands, they all seem to be in London this time. So uh, the Business Growth Show, that's one. Always love these events. Mark Linton has his own unique way of doing speed networking, if you haven't met him before. Uh, the next one of those is in London on the 14th at 9 a.m. until 3 at West Ham Stadium in Upton Park. Uh, another business biscotti on the 17th of October at Heathrow. So if you're passing on the motorway that day, stop in and make uh, that visit to the Park Inn Hotel at Heathrow on Bath Road. And finally, there's a number of business incubators which are starting to form as well. More about those soon. Hopefully, we're going to be talking to one of those. But I saw one recruiting, uh, and they're called Velocity Business Hub in Luton. They have a free event all about getting finance to start a business on the 8th of October between 8.45 and midday at the Chilton Hotel in Luton. So this is Wake Up to Business, your Get the Business Day Started program. I'm Richard Midson from shoutpow.com and with me are my guests Neville Capodia and John Ballard from Limetime Apps and Neville from Think Slim and Trim. Now we were talking about, um, talking yesterday about super mentoring. John and I have been advising our guests. Neville, it's your turn this time to give us some advice based on either your business experience or your product experience. So uh, over to you. Thank you. Well, obviously, um, I know that John deals with the business in apps, manufacturing apps and getting apps out, and you're involved in social media side and production all here. So mine's totally different in the health business. The, the advice on health is kind of general anyway. So what I thought was maybe something that's absolutely helped me, regardless of what the business is, and that's the what I call the personal development side. Um, Everything you guys do that I do is in the business of skill base. So you're learning your skills in understanding apps, learning your skills in understanding how to do social media. However, what happens when you get a challenge? Yeah? What happens when you find yourself being distracted too, too much? There's nothing in the manual that you can read and just go away and then you've solved it. Yeah. It's all a change of attitude. And the most powerful things that I've found was discovering what books, what audio, what authors really connect with you and going through their material in a relaxed fashion affects the mind in such a positive way that you can then deal with all the challenges that not only business but life brings with it. Mm and go through them in a much more positive way and come out way so, better. So can you give us some examples? I mean, you know, look at myself, what have been the challenges? Um, one of the ones was, I, I've done this stuff before for myself, I did social media, I set up a, a you know, quite a successful online show um, before, but you still feel at times, is this going to work? Yeah. So what do you do at that point? Okay, so that, that, is, that is the belief and confidence side of you. And traditionally, that's based on experience. So we're looking in the past to help us understand, can we do something in the future? If your past hasn't been completely positive and solid, then you're going to be concerned about what you want to do. Vice versa, if your past has been absolutely positive and solid, you're probably not going to concern yourself and you'll be doing it anyway. Okay? So it's a bit of a conundrum. Mm. Linking in with the personal development that helps you change your understanding of don't worry about the past maybe take the leap of faith type of quoting mm. uh, but with a uh, understanding of why you're doing it mm. 
So your challenge was? Well, it's really, it's really uh, uh, you know, when I said at my original online show, it was got a million views, which was fantastic, but it didn't actually make enough money to make it worthwhile. It wasn't a commercial success. Now, I learned a huge amount from that, but it means that when you st go into social media from there, you start getting clients who want different things, but you still think to yourself, is this, is this going to work? Because I had a mixed experience in the past. Okay, so what if I said to you, everything works? Everything works. It's been tried before, it works. Yeah, Okay. Every, everything works. So if you just took that attitude at face value, everything works, and then went at it with 100% belief and commitment, I promise you, it will work. You might not get a straight line going like that, and it'll be up and down, up and down, but the things that I fully linked into is 100% belief, 100% commitment, and then if you have the support around you for the knowledge, mm. then you can just take on knowledge and go with it. Mm. Yeah? And yours, John, in, in Acts, is there any challenge? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Look at that huge, face. It's like, huge where do challenges. I start? Huge How challenges. long have we got yeah, on this video? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ma oh, massive challenge. The, certainly from what I'm doing at the moment, um, you know, looking at games, um, the, the biggest challenge actually is, is getting people out there to know that, that there's a game on the App Store and you know and that it's really great and they've got to download it because the revenue depends on people multi, you know downloading multiple copies. So so tens of thousands of people downloading it. Hey, happy days! But if I only get a few hundred people, then you know it's uh, it's, it's not worth doing it almost. Um, so so the, the challenge actually is is the marketing aspect and getting it right. Okay, so that, that's, that kind of rang a bell listening to what you were saying there, the words. Some of the things are down to the way you say that then produce the results. So if you say you have a challenge, mm -hmm. you will continue having a challenge. If you say, how shall we solve this challenge? And just focus in on the solving part as opposed to I've got a challenge, you'll find that your answers will appear. And again, it's the way of thinking. That's something I've discovered through personal development is that, yes, we do have the challenges, but not to view them in that way, to view them as an opportunity mm. to go further. As you say, if you focus on the solution rather than the problem, problem. then how, yeah. do, how do I solve this? How do I solve mm. this? Yeah. It's, it's, it's exactly the same really vein as uh, you buy a red, red Volkswagen yeah. and suddenly you see red Volkswagens everywhere. Of yes. course. Yeah because you're now focused in that. Yeah. In the same way, if you're focused into, I've got a challenge, you'll just see challenges everywhere. So if to you sum, up your, sum up your advice to John and me then? Okay. Find, go through the fun of reading and listening to all these different authors, ask people in the one area you want to improve on. So if it is looking solution focused mm. on there, then look, ask people around them how have you managed to solve that for yourselves mm. who have you listened to or read and go and read it and that's it's a lifelong learning that's it's it's interesting isn't it because business books as you rightly say they've got all mm. the stuff about cash flow charts and all the stuff about strengths and weaknesses but nothing about dealing with some of those yeah things. <laughs> I mean, it's, in, it's interesting actually because obviously the question there is have you got is it you know have you got a challenge the yeah. answer is yes I've got a challenge and, and there's yeah. also been challenges but you didn't then ask the next question is what are you doing about it because actually yeah. I'm already doing all of those things and have done them and they're in place now and hopefully they're all going to work yeah because you've got to you've got to have faith yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but, but that's happening you see yeah, yeah it's finding the solutions isn't yeah. it yeah Listen, I can't thank thank my guests enough it's been an absolutely fantastic mm -hmm. show um so that's it for this week uh, people often ask how we decide which events and which businesses to visit. The answer is people invite us. So if you have an interesting event and guests and whether it's a networking meeting, expo show, an award ceremony, or even if you just have a vibrant office or a venue and you want to gather together some other business people to come to your location, then get in touch with us because we'd love to come and film. We're also looking for business lifestyle features too. Business is all about the rewards. So if you're a company who provide things that business people might want to enjoy and you can show that off to us then simply send us an email and let us know because business should be fun after all shouldn't it if you didn't see the last technical test show then there was uh, some great discussions in there about what to do with clients who won't pay in fact it was packed with ideas and uh, discussion as well at Hounslow Chamber of Commerce so if you're watching YouTube then you can click on the link which should have appeared on the screen somewhere around me right now 
You've been watching Wake Up To Business TV, sponsored by shoutpower.com from Kingston Business Biscotti in Kingston upon Thames in Surrey. I'd like to thank all my guests, as I say, John Ballard from Line Time Apps. Thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure. And also Neville thank Capadia you. from Think Slim and Trim. Some great advice in there for all of us today. I would like to end with a quote. So this is this week's quote, and it's a question really that really gets you thinking from um, Danny Mayer, the CEO of Union Square Hospitality Group. It's a bit like what Neville's just talking about, the questions that really get us to work and be successful in business. Ask yourself this question. How can we become the company that would put us out of business? That's something to think about. So may I wish you a highly successful and profitable business day. Over the past few minutes, you've been part of Wake Up To Business TV. Now, carry on the conversation on Twitter at hashtag wakeup, the number two, biz, or go to shoutpow.com for links. If you'd like us to come to your event, it's free. Simply send us an email at info at wakeuptobusiness.com and we'll send you details about how you can use the show to promote your event. We hope to see you very soon.